Oh my gosh, my rod just snapped. <laughs> See what we got here. Fishing a new area I've never fished before. I'm looking for depth changes out on the river in my canoe this morning. And I was I was in an area that was shallow like five feet. Then I was in another area that was you know, like rocky and I was getting hung up all the time with the jig. So I decided to troll through that area and then came across this little guy when it changed depths, you know, from five to seven feet. I wanted to find a little bit of a deeper area because I was kind of cruising along. I was like, why is it five feet this entire time? There's got to be a deeper side. And it's really wide right here in the river. So I literally just went to the other side. And then as soon as I went to the other side, this little guy bit so let me get him off of here really quick <sighs> that's a feisty little 14 inch walleye let me tell you i was not happy to be in that canoe here it's amazing to me how simple yet effective fishing rivers can be for any species walleye northern bass game fish in general just by looking for simple depth changes and when I make these river videos, I feel kind of silly sometimes because every river is so different. Every stretch of the river is very different. And so it's hard for me to explain what you need to do on your river or what I think you should do on your river in order to catch fish. But I do know one thing about fishing for rivers and that's change is where you're going to find fish. If it's the same the entire time, kind of like a desert underneath the water, you're not going to find fish there. If it's different, if sudden change happens, you're probably going to find some fish there. Like an edge, drop off, some kind of reef, underground, underwater point, hump, hole. The idea here is to cover as much water as I can today. I got up super early. I purposely wanted to come out here when the water was calm, not a lot of wind, and just enjoy the morning, kind of exploring new territory, finding new places to go where I can hook into some decent fish. So right now we're looking at 6.8 feet, 7.2, 7.4. I was fishing this shoreline over here, and I noticed that it was five feet the entire time, basically. I moved out here to the right over this way, and Currently where I'm at now is 6.7. And then I kind of slid over this way here. I wasn't even going parallel with the shore. I was kind of going at an angle like I am right now. You can see here it's 7.9. As soon as I got to that deeper water is when that walleye hit my bait. Got something else here again. This time the depth went up to four feet. Instead of going down. But it was that change we were talking about. Change from six or seven feet up to four. Same thing, it was that change, wasn't it? Oh my gosh. My rod just snapped. My rod just snapped in half. Hoisting this fish in, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> again, something weird. <laughs> <laughs> Something always happens when I go fishing, let me tell you. If you haven't seen a couple of videos ago, my line break broke and I was reeling in a fish hand over hand. That's what happened that trip. Yeah, this is just a clear break. Let me let me fix this mess right now. Get this fish, uh, the hooks out of the fish's mouth, and I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you this. You're probably wondering why I'm not mad right now, but it was a... It was a ooh. I'll be with you in a second. So we've got another 14 inch walleye right here and it hit right where that change was. Ooh, another feisty one. Right where that change happened, that's where that one struck. And I noticed this section of the river over here kind of goes up to a flats a little bit. And where I was fishing 
on the left side of it. A little bit of a flats over there. You can kind of tell because the river bends out, typically goes up, I can see an exposed rock. Um, the water is moving slightly faster over the top of it, at least it appears that way because it's more shallow. So I was like, I'm going to kind of go over there, just fish that edge a little bit. And I was noticing on my locator, I hear it says five, but back there where I was, it was like six. And it was six forever. I was like, I'm going to find a little bit of change to see if I can get a walleye or bass or northern to bite. I turned my trolling motor, turned this way. I approached that area over there that's more shallow where we're heading now. And that would be, you know, a, a flats or whatever you want to call it where it goes up. Because the river slightly bends like this. So as you can imagine, you know, if there was no water here, the ground would kind of come up like this and then go down where the channel probably is over in this direction over there. And right when I got to like, I think it was 4.7, that's when that fish hit. And I don't know about you, but when you're trolling on a river system where there are these changes and you're looking for changes, I'm staring at the locator almost the entire time. I don't need to watch my bait. I'm not working a topwater. I'm not watching a bobber. I'm, I'm feeling for that fish to strike as I'm trolling through here. And you don't have to troll. You can find these areas and you can cast as well. I just want to cover a lot of water this morning. Like I said, I'm exploring a, a brand new area to me. I've only driven through here. I've never actually stopped and fished this or trolled through even. I've never wet a line in this area. So it's encouraging to find other areas, new areas that you can fish. So this was a free rod given to me. It's very old. By old, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't even know how old it is. It's, it's, it's definitely not new. It's a rod combo. Eight pound tests, six foot six. I'm just using it because for trolling, in most cases, you don't need expensive equipment, especially for this kind of trolling. And it was a combo. Caught a lot of nice fish on here. As a matter of fact, the biggest fish I've ever, freshwater fish I've ever caught in my life was on this rod. Which is funny that when I hoisted that little walleye into the canoe, that it broke. Maybe it was just, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. It broke kind of toward the tip, well, about 18 inches below the tip, I would say. The rest of it's right here. With the crankbait that I obviously need to put on a different rod right now. So that's what we're dealing with. Busted, no way to fix that. Obviously not under warranty. Rods like this, it's a fairly cheap rod to begin with. I believe it's a Mitchell rod, so nothing fancy. Had a nice hard hit, trolling right in the middle between some rocks but the thing just smacked this bait. It's funny because there's people trolling in front of me and they're like 50 yards in front of me watching me right now. Nothing too big. I'm gonna let him go over the water, I think. So, still fun. Still a lot of fun. 